Hello everyone, welcome to this video. This video is about the report element in gynecologic cytopathology, reactive cellular changes associated with inflammation, lymphocytic cervicitis, radiation, and IUCD. Before that, you must know that negative intraepithelial lesions or malignancy that also called as NILM is stated in the general categorization or in the interpretation results section of the report when there is no presence of cellular evidence of neoplasia. NILM can be categorized in three different categories which are normal cellular elements, non-neoplastic findings, and organisms. For non-neoplastic findings, it can be separated in three different categories which are non-neoplastic cellular variations, other non-neoplastic findings, and glandular cell status post-hysterectomy. Other non-neoplastic findings include reactive cellular changes in inflammation or typical repair, lymphocytic cervicitis, radiation, an intrauterine contraceptive device IUCD that will be further explained in this video. To begin with, reactive cellular changes associated with inflammation includes two types of inflammation which are acute inflammation and chronic inflammation. Do you have any idea of what are the cytomorphology effects of inflammation? The characteristics for acute inflammation squamous cell changes are nucleus enlargement in 1 to 2 times, infrequent binucleation, mild hyperchromatic, presence of perinuclear halo, and vacuolation. For chronic inflammation squamous cell changes, hyperkeratosis will show the characteristics of sheet of enucleated squamous cells, blurred cellular border, and orangeophilic cytoplasm. Parakeratosis shows the characteristics of small round or pinotic nuclei, dense orangeophilic cytoplasm and present in singly or in sheets. The suggestion for this diagnosis is repeat smear as scheduled. Next up, reactive cellular changes associated with lymphocytic cervicitis. Lymphocytic cervicitis is a form of chronic cervicitis characterized by the formation of mature lymphoid follicles in the subepithelium of cervix. It is also known as follicular cervicitis. Do you know what is the cytomorphology of lymphocytic cervicitis? The characteristics of this diagnosis include slightly nuclear enlargement, background predominantly filled with lymphocytes and the presence of tangible body macrophages. The suggestion for this diagnosis is repeat smear after treatment. There is an increased possibility of misdiagnosis due to the presentation of loose clump cells. Not only that, but differential diagnosis should also be made for malignant lymphoma and adenocarcinoma. Thirdly, for reactive cellular changes associated with IUCD, the affected cells is endometrial or glandular cells. It is also referred to as bubble gum cells. The patients may shed endometrial cells at any time during menstrual cycles. Let's move on to the cytomorphology of this diagnosis. For the first type of IUCD, the characteristics include nuclear enlargement, prominent nucleoli, dense cytoplasm, abundant and vacuolated cytoplasm, nuclear degeneration, signet ring-like appearance, and presence of isolate or small group of cells. For the second type, the characteristics are high NC ratio, hyperchromatic nucleus, scanty cytoplasm, dense cytoplasm, and isolated cell. The suggestion for this diagnosis is repeat smear as scheduled. Finally, reactive cellular changes associated with radiation. The ionizing radiation effects on cells lead to cytologic features that may be mistaken with other abnormal cellular changes. What does the cells affected by radiation look like? In acute phase, where the changes that occur within 14 days of radiotherapy, the characteristics include large bizarre cells, multinucleation, cytoplasmic vacuolation and polychromasia, mononuclear hyperchromasia, cellular debris and normal NC ratio. For chronic phase where the cellular changes persist for many years following treatments, the characteristics include cytomegaly which is abundant cytoplasm, nucleomegaly which is nuclear enlargement, and engulfed polymorphonuclear neutrophils. Please remember that the NC ratio maintains normal. Following this diagnosis, repeat smears as schedule is suggested. That's all for the video. Thank you for watching. Bye!